Oh, to finally escape from one civil war, only to find yourself in the midst of another civil war. It's a vicious cycle. Zipan, released in 2015 and is directed by Jacques Odiar, who has also directed such films like See How They Fall, A Cell Made Hero, The Beat That My Heart Skipped, A Prophet, and Rust and Bow. And this film is starring Antoni Thassan, Jasu Thassan, Kaliswari Srinivasan, and Claudine Binistabi. Okay, before we go any further, I know that that reading of those names was god-awful and I was completely far off. I get it. I apologize. I am trying. This, the reason why this channel exists, it's for me to broaden my horizons of cinema and film watching. So here I'm watching foreign films or these films that are not made here in America, that don't speak the English language that I know. So, but please know, I am trying and I am so sorry. That was so bad. But all of you out there who've subscribed to this channel, you all know that and you're all fantastic. So there's no way I'm gonna get just the worst comments in the world on this video, right? Please? And the reason why we're discussing Japan today is because it was a PayPal recommendation slash donation from one of my big contributors on this channel, Autumn Blood. You strike again with another movie that I've never heard of before, a film that I would never have gone out of my way to see unless it was recommended to me. And I'm glad you did because this one turned out to be a pretty dramatic film, but a pretty damn good film nonetheless. So if any of you out there also want to be like Autumn Blood, and help contribute to me and support me and donate to this channel, you can make a PayPal donation by clicking on the donate button on the main page of my YouTube channel. Any size donation will do. And if you have a movie that you really want me to watch and give you a shout out on the channel for, you can attach your movie with your donation. And if I have access to it, I will watch it, review it, and publish my review of it as quickly as I possibly can for you. The film follows three separate refugees who have no link with each other whatsoever, trying to escape the aftermath of the civil war in Sri Lanka. And the best way to ensure that they can escape from the country, they pose as a husband, wife, and daughter. And when they are finally able to escape, they make their way to France, where they find themselves as the caretaker for this small apartment community that is run down and located in the middle of a drug crime lord's operation. And while things seem to be going as well as they possibly can, eventually the young hooligans push Japan too far, and the pain of their nation's civil war comes out in full force when Japan decides to take matters into his own hands. So I think it's fair to say that I am not the most cultured person in the world, or the least, the, not the most cultured person on YouTube. So it's really nice getting these recommendations of these foreign films and just expanding my horizons with all of this foreign cinema that I've watched over the last several years, thanks to recommendations from people here on YouTube. It's really nice to see how films are made on the other side of the world, as opposed to everything just being here in America and in Hollywood. I like seeing stories of different types of civil wars throughout the world. Sri Lanka, country that I've heard of, of course, I've never studied before, and it was nice to finally realize where Sri Lanka is. Again, not cultured. But I really enjoy that this film has several layered messages and symbolism and metaphors in here. First off, I love stories and films that deal with the idea that family does not necessarily mean that you are related by blood. Family, in my opinion, is something that you choose to be a part of. In my life, I mean, definitely my wife, of course, is family, but I've always considered my friends that I've come to be close with to be more family to me than my actual blood family. And that philosophy, I mean, you can take over into the orphan world and people that grew up without parents, never knowing their parents, and then being adopted by someone else, and they become a family. I mean, it's proof right there that family does not mean that you are related by blood, it's what you choose to be. And that's exactly what happens here. They are resistant to each other at first, they are together for convenience and for safety and for refuge, and it takes a while, but eventually we have the sense that we are a family. These three people three complete strangers not knowing each other before this boat trip to freedom and safety, eventually they consider themselves to be a family. And there's also the theme of just war, civil war, violence, 
it's kind of everywhere in this world, unfortunately. These three people are refugees trying to get out of Sri Lanka because there is a civil war brewing. It's actually coming to an end because one side is losing and they escape and they're going to start a life anew. Is it a prestige world at first? No, not at all. They're caretakers of a rundown apartment. They barely have anything and any money at all to survive with food and water. But once they are there, they find themselves in the midst of another civil war between two rival drug gangs. Like I said, oh to escape one civil war, only to find yourself in the middle of another one. One man's civil war is another man's civil war. Where was I going with that? It's a very cynical thing to say, but it's also kind of a very true thing to say is that war and violence as much as we hate to admit it, it is part of human nature and human understanding of how things work in the world. I'm not saying it's good, I'm just saying that's been around for tens of thousands of years. People fighting other people. It's one of the, I guess, easiest things that humans can do and have created over the many centuries. And I like that this film explores that. This is a dramatic piece. It is a very slow build and it does build up to a pretty... I don't want to say action-packed climax, but it is played up to be kind of this badass, almost Jason Bourne-esque type moment that comes a little late in the storytelling, in my opinion. Very small spoiler for what I'm about to say here. Pan goes in and he's trying to take out everyone, trying to save someone, and then, I mean, we black out, and then all of a sudden, the Pan is back in his apartment, and the person that he's trying to save is saved because the person that was holding her captive just died so it's they're fine they're all fine now now thank you how are you on paper in the storytelling i think this climax this action set piece does make sense it does feel out of place though once we get to that action set piece because this thing is a long drawn out dramatic telling of these people developing their relationship and becoming a family and then we get to this action piece with machetes and and guns and exploding cars it's like oh okay he had that in him the whole time I, I was not expecting that. The actors do a great job, though, and I'm not going to try to say their names again just because I know I'm freaking terrible, but the timidness that they all show towards each other, even though they're supposed to be this family, it's really great to explore and see it grow over time. This shyness, this introvertedness kind of just break down, and all of a sudden they're able to talk to each other, just like a regular family, like normal people, just shooting the breeze, just talking, and not posing that you're talking to each other other. You're actually just talking. I like it. Like I said, though, it is a pretty slow movie, so I don't know if I would go back willingly to watch this film again and again, but it's definitely not terrible. This is a good dramatic piece, and if you're in the mood for a good dramatic piece, I think this film is for you. I'm gonna give Japan four out of five Blu-ray. I like it a lot. All right, everyone, now comes my favorite part of my videos where I randomly pick which movie I'm going to be watching next. And the next movie that we're doing, it's going to be October. And October is Halloween month. So on here, what I try to do is make everything Halloween and select from all the Halloween movies that I have. So horror, thrillers, things like that. So let's take a look and see what's going to be up first. The Wicker Man. Oh god. The bees! Oh my god, the bees! Why the bees? Ah! It's a movie I've never seen before. I've never seen the original. This one, of course, is the Nicolas Cage version. I've never seen the film, but I've seen clips from it again and again and again, so... I guess I know what happens, but I've never seen this magnificent performance that Nicolas Cage gives. And I cannot wait. If any of you have recommendations of films that you want me to review on here, you can make a PayPal donation on the main page of my YouTube channel. Any size donation will do, just attach your movie recommendation with your donation, and if I have access to it, I will watch it, review it, give you a shout out on the channel, and get my review of it published as quickly as I possibly can. So guys, have you seen Japan? What did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before, and you stumbled across it because of this video, then comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you all know, the next time I'm releasing my next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time with my review of The Wicker Man. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.